the show! I am Wolfabane, your host for today, and we are back doing another Pokemon type tier list. How day of fantastic day, fantastic time, fantastic gaming, and a fantastic life right now, everybody. I'm back. I'm here. And I'm ready to talk about a video game. Uh, yes, you have noticed I am doing significantly better this week. Thank you, everybody, who was checking in on me and everyone who was looking after me all weekend at LARP. LARP was a very, very good time. I am a bit achy and still overheating a little bit. <laughs> but, hey, we are back. We are live and we are ready to do a Pokemon type tier list. And has my freaking thing not done properly work? Damn it. There we go. It's actually come up with all the things that I set up for this damn stream. Oh. Apologies, my uh, computer and mouse particularly are acting up a little bit this week. So, uh, yeah, there might be some weirdness going on, essentially. But yes, we are doing the flying types today. Flying types, which are a damn good type. I... Weirdly like a lot of flying types, but the vast majority of them I don't like because they're flying types. You know, I like them because of other reasons. They just happen to be flying types. But weirdly, of my top four favorite Pokemon, three of them are flying types. So, yeah, it's it's kind of weird. But hey, we'll, we'll make do with what we got. So, let's go through the tiers as usual. You've seen these tier list videos before, probably, uh, if you are watching these. Uh, if you are not, and hi, there are a bunch of others as well. I have done five or six, I think. I think I've done six tier lists before this. Uh, hey, buddy. He. But yes, so we are doing flying today. And I decided to put the uh, tiers in order of um, how high up they are. Because, you know, flying, right? Makes sense. It makes sense to be in the sky. So, S tier is going to be the stratosphere, one of the layers, the atmosphere. It was uh, pretty much the highest up thing I could find that began with an S. You know? A tier is alto status. I don't know if that's alto stratus, I think. I think I mistyped it. I think it was alto stratus. It's some fucking cloud, okay? It's a type of cloud. It's, a, it's, a, it's high up in the sky. What more do you want? Uh, B is... Burj Khalifa? Straight out of heaven. That would have been a good one. Uh, but yeah, Burj Khalifa, which I believe is the highest uh, the highest building in the world. The tallest building in the world. Which I was like, that's, that seems pretty fitting for B tier, right? Like, it's good. It's very high up, but not that bad. Uh, C tier is a coastal redwood, which is a very, very tall type of tree that I just randomly found. It was the tallest one I could find that began with a C. I'm gonna be honest, that's kind of all it was. And D is dirt. It's dirt tier. Because dirt isn't very high off the ground usually. Because if it's high off the ground, it's usually a mountain or a hill. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we are going to be doing this. Uh, anyone who hasn't watched these tier lists before, the basic premise. S tier is the top, the best of the best of the best. A is very, very good. Really like it. Yeah, dirt is straight up dirt. B is my, these are good. Like, they're not necessarily, like, my absolute, they're the best of all things. But they're usually good. Even if I'm not a huge fan of them myself, I will go, they're a good design. Like, I genuinely like it. Uh, and there's no, like, personal grievance I've got against this thing. C is my average tier. I will put, if I think a Pokemon is eh or meh, nothing special or I have no particularly strong opinion on it, it will go in C. D tier is I actively dislike it. That is the only things that will go in D tier are things I actively don't like. So, that is the basic premise of our Indui tier list. They're not necessarily, these are, once again, not anything like how competitively good they are. How, it is, it's a, a multitude of factors. It's how much I personally like them. So, it's got some competitive -y stuff with it, because I do like playing competitive Pokemon. It's very fun. And it's also got a much more on vibes. Vibes are the important bit. So, let's start off with, um... Oh, look, it's my, it's one of my favorite Pokemon. Yes, I do. It's a good Pokemon, too, but what you, what you, I, I know one of the ones that you absolutely love. But yeah, it's my, fa it's one of my favorites. One of my top three favorite Pokemon, as in literally one of the top, one of the Pokemon that switches place into first place every time I have it. It's Charizard. I am a Charizard fan myself. You are going right up to the top immediately, Charizard. I love it. 
Love this Pokemon. It's my starter of choice. Uh, what can I say? It's the fucking dragon. It's not a dragon type, but it's a dragon. Uh, also, now we have Mega Charizard Y and Gigantamax Charizard. I absolutely love all three of these. They are all absolute top, 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 eight S tier. 4B. I absolutely love all of them. They are so fucking cool. Genuinely adore all three of them. I like them all for different reasons. Obviously, Charizard is my boy. Uh, it's my starter pick. Uh, Mega Charizard Y is the best Charizard at being Charizard. I like Charizard X a little bit more, but they do completely different things, right? They, they both do completely different jobs, so it's hard to really compare them where this one is better at being Charizard, right? Charizard Y is Charizard, the actual Mega version. It, it does, does everything Charizard does better. Uh, Charizard X uh, plays Charizard in a very different way. It's it's very physical Charizard. It's the beat down Charizard, which to be honest is actually how I like to run Charizard anyway. So yeah. Also, Mega Charizard Y, Drought, big one. Drought is awesome. Uh, and G Max Charizard, G Max Charizard. I've said before, it's my favorite G Max. It's one of the G Max that I think looks genuinely very good. It's just the Fire King Dragon. It's a great, great looking Pokemon. Um, yeah, I just love it. So yeah, instant S tier, and there's only one Pokemon that's even challenging it for the top spot of S tier, let's be honest, and you all know what it is. So next we're getting to Butterfree. I, I've talked about this before in the Bug-type tier list, which I did last week, by the way. Do check that video out. It is up on my YouTube now. Uh, I really like Butterfree. Butterfree actually goes quite hard, genuinely. It's like a good Bug-type if you played the Kanto games, you've you've had some fun with Butterfree, almost certainly. Butterfree is very very cool. I am quite the fan of it, and uh, yeah, you're getting you're getting a good mark, Butterfree. Uh, I will put you. I think I'll put you in B tier because you are great, but I won't quite. But a flying type is a little harder to uh, to pin down than um, Bug type for me on the really good versus the eh. So, yeah, uh, I will go with, once again, G-Max Butterfree. I talked about this a lot last week as well. I am a huge fan of G-Max Butterfree. Fucking work, you piece of crap mouse. There we go. I am a... My freaking um, hard drives are out of played up. Am I muted? Uh, it says I'm coming through. Give me a second. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Can I hear uh, It says I'm coming through. Give me a second. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. No, it's all fine. Unless it literally cut out a minute. To be honest, my freaking... All my audio... All my PCs just acted up a bit at the moment. Yeah. Everything is just wanted to play up. Uh, as I said, new, new PC, right? So, yeah. But anyway, let's keep on keeping on. So, Pidgey. Pidgey, Pidgey, Pidgey. I quite like Pidgey. I did use one, obviously. Pretty much everybody's used one at one point if you played the Kanto games, like, as a kid. Uh, Pidgey is just a pretty decent all-round, like, Pokemon. Um, it's kind of fun, right? Uh, the whole Pidgey, Pidgeotto, Pidgeot. They're, they are the classic pigeon. They are the classic verb. Uh, so I think I'll put all of them in B tier. Like, a little bit lower than Butterfree, I think. But I do, I do like them. We will, we will set a separate thing, though, for Mega Pidgeot. Because I've never used Mega Pidgeot. But there is something I really, really like about Mega Pidgeot. Mega Pidgeot is a special attacker with no guard. Which is a thing that I think they should do more of. I really like no guard as an ability. It's a really cool ability. Yeah, right. You gotta, you gotta love the underdog. They're, they're kind of cool. Uh, and Mega Pidgeot obviously gets no guard. It gets Focus Blast. Which is actually called Focus Blast when used on Mega Pidgeot. Because it's not... It can't miss with no guard. 
So you've got a 120 power fighting move, which can't miss. Like, special fighting move, which is really fucking cool. Uh, I believe it also gets Hurricane, which is obviously, like, crazy inaccurate. But it's like Stab or Hurricane that can't miss. Ooh, that's going to do some work. Uh, I don't know what physical move it uses, really. Oh, what, uh, well, not physical move. What, um, normal move. Hey, Ivory Princess. Nice. We have just started a couple of minutes, a few minutes ago, so you're not missed too much. But yeah, Mega, Mega Pidgeot, I am giving Mega Pidgeot a bit more of a thing. I would put it probably higher, but I have never actually used it. Hyper Beam. I mean, Hyper Beam's Hyper Beam, which is its own problem, right? But there's probably some move that it gets, which is cool. That's, like, not... That's a good special one, so... I'm sure you can definitely make use of it. Right. Yeah, it's Scarf Hyper... Scarf Hyper Beam Porygon! The classic. <laughs> yeah, I, I am putting Mega Pidgeot at A tier. I think that is a very comfy spot to put it in. Um, would probably, might get into S tier, but I've never used it. And that is genuinely the, my thought on it, really. But I do also really like its design. I think it's a very, very pretty design, honestly. I think, I think they went quite hard with it. Also, now here's the next Pokemon, which I genuinely think they are going to give either a new evolution. Uh, is a showdown link? You know what, I will give you permission to put the link in. So uh, when it inevitably complains at me... Sure, put the link up. I gave you permission to put the link in the chat. Yeah, yeah. I gave, I gave you permission to put the showdown link up. Uh, anyone, uh, check that link out after the stream. <laughs> it will not be in the description on the YouTube video, just as a heads up. So, Spiro and Firo. Now, I genuinely like them. I don't know why I like them. I've always just had a bit of a fondness. Right? For Spiro and Firo, I think they're kind of cool Pokemon. There's a C for you. I think they are B for me. I, I will say, I am convinced that they're either going to get a Mega in Legend ZA. That's the link. Oh, it... Oh, it's Twitch going kind of thing? This is the link. It... Uh, yeah, I didn't censor that. That censored automatically. Like, not even, it didn't even come up with an option. I don't know on that one. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know on that one. Ah, fair. That's unfortunate. Yeah, gotta love that, right? But yes, um... Spirit Fira, I am convinced that it's going to have a Mega or a new evolution at some point, right? Uh, it's one of those, like, forgotten about Pokemon from Kanto, which we've always seen any Kanto Pokemon that has been completely forgotten about. It gets something. You know, like Bishop. I could see it getting a third stage, which would make it quite a bit cooler. Uh, I don't know really what vibe they'd go for it, but I could definitely see them doing it. Uh, so I think I'm going to put Sp uh, Spiro. In C tier. But Firo, I'm going to put it as a low B tier. Like a low B tier. Like a vulture? Maybe. Maybe. Or they could go They could go something wa really wacky with it. Like they could go Thunderbird style with it. And like give it an electric type. They could give it a different typing. Would be kind of cool. Right? Like, I don't know. What's a cool type that it could be interesting? Stronger wing, sharper beak. Yeah, like Zapdos were done right. Like, well, fighting would be a cool one. I I could see a fighting one. Yeah, I could I could absolutely see them going like fighting type. Dark type would be interesting because flying dark is always a cool one. And there isn't a, I don't think there's a physical attacking, dark flying type, right? Because the dark flying types that exist are Glary Moltres, uh, Yveltal, uh, I know there's Honchkrow, I suppose. Water flight, they're not going to make another water flying type. Maybe steel flight, they could go a st a offensive steel flying, that'd be kind of cool. Because both of steel, all the steel flyings are like defensive ones. I could see a lot of things. They could do a lot of, uh, they could do a, they could cook. I think they could cook with their, with their Pharaoh. 
Haunch Crow, I Oh, and H Oculus, yeah. Mandibles, Murkrow, Volby, Yveltal, all of them. Yeah. None of them... Uh, the only one of those that's a physical attacker is, um... Haunch Crow, right? And Haunch Crow has other, other jobs, so... Yeah. Zubat! Zubat, Zubat, Zubat. Yeah, Haunch with Boxy. I, I, I actually love running Scope Lens. Haunch Crow. Oh, nice. Catch Screwtail. Screwtail's fun. Uh, B tier, I, I'd say that's a very, very solid place. Hi, B tier. Uh, Golbat. I'll put Golbat in B tier as well. As soon as the mouse stops bugging out. There we go. I'll say I put those two in B tier. Uh, they are classics. They're also the only poison flying types in existence, which is really weird to me. Hmm. Yep. Kind of for you like Golbat? I love I love uh I love Crobat. We'll get to Crobat. But yeah, I quite like Zubat. Like Zubat is never an awful choice, right? That's my thought. And yeah, Golbat is just the middle stage for it. Um uh, So yeah, it's always a bit of a it's neat. And it's always useful. You know it's going to be in the game. I think the only game it's ever not been in is Scarvine, right? I'm pretty sure it's not in Scarvile, Scarlet Violet. But Crobat is a class. But they got the, the, a classic. Yeah, I was about to say, I was surprised that you put Goldbat over Crobat. Crobat's, Cro Crobat goes hard. But yeah. Going on here. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> Is it literally ad doing ads for Pokemon Scarlet Violet? <laughs> hey, I don't control the ads of this channel. They just happen. <laughs> but yeah. I, I do quite like Zubat and uh, Golbat. They are, they are fun. Okay. Regular Farfish. I mean, yeah. It's Pokemon. What am I going to do? Put tier list on it? I could. But I could put tier list in the tags instead. And it's using Pokemon that are in Scar Violet. Look, there's Iron Jugulus at the bottom. It's totally Scar Violet. <laughs> Darn you not paying me money. <laughs> I don't really care. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, oh, one moment. Who the fuck is spam messaging me? It's not that, it's not that. Exactly, I didn't get the what, like five pence. <laughs> but yeah, uh, regular far fetched. Okay, okay. Now, regular far fetched, I'm sorry, everybody, but I don't like far fetched. I just don't. I, I, what, what can I say? It's a fucking far fetched. I. I have no affection for it. The only thing that I think it's noteworthy for at all is if you are doing a mono flying type run in Gen 1, it's the only flying type that can learn cut besides Scyther. Right. That's, I think, the only thing it's got going for it. I don't like Farfetch'd. 
Regular Farfetch'd I don't like. Galarian, I do. I like Galarian. Which I think is a mono fighting type, so I don't even know if it's on this list, does it? Yeah. Exactly, just use Scyther, because Scyther's better. <laughs> yeah, Farfetch'd. The only thing Farfetch'd has going for it is the leak. Which is better on the other Farfetch'd. Or you could use any other Pokemon with a scope lens. And you've suddenly got a better Farfetch'd. So, yeah, Farfetch'd, I'm sorry, but you're, you're kind of bad and you're not my kind of goofy. So, yeah. Uh, Do Do Duo and Do Drio, um, I will fully admit these Pokemon are good. I They are not my personal picks, though. So I will give them a C tier. Then I've, I've always been kind of met on them. But I know some people that love Dodrio, and I guess I can see it. Like, it's actually quite a good Pokemon. Do Dodrio is a slept only good Pokemon. Genuinely. But it's not my vibe. Sir Birdius, I don't like it. I, it's just it's just not for me. I, I will say, not for me. But I'm not... There was Birdie or something else in game. Yeah. It's fine. I, I can't give them anything... Higher or lower than C tier. Right. They are, they are pretty good. I have actually done... I have used them a little bit, and they have done some very good work. They're actually pretty fast. They're the same speed as, like, Charizard and things. They're actually quite quick. Um, I believe they're 100 speed baseline. Uh, their abilities are pretty decent. Uh, they, can, they can really do some work, genuinely. Scyther, you know Scyther's getting a good mark from me. I am debating, do I put Scyther in S tier or A tier? I love Scyther. As people saw on the bug type tier list, I really, really like Scyther. Hmm. Is the S tier going to be too full? That I'll drop Scyther down a peg. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm putting Scyther in S tier. It's behind Charizard. But it is a good Pokemon. I really like Scyther. Scyther's always had a great design. The best Gen 1 bug. Uh, it's a really cool design. I'm, I'm sorry uh, to my buddy Connor, who absolutely adores Beedrill. But I like Scyther. Okay. I do like Beedrill as well, I will say. Yeah, great shiny. Um... Well, it gets, like, the red chunks on it. I don't like Scizor's shiny, I will say. But I think that's because Scizor's regular color scheme slaps. Is the main reason I don't like the shiny Scizor. Because uh, shiny Scizor is, like, a nice emerald green. But I love the just burnished, like, hot rod red, right? Like, that just goes hard. But regular Scyther is a fantastic looking Pokemon. And I'm a big fan of it. Mega Pinsir. Now, I've never used Mega Pinsir. Uh, genuinely. I think it's kind of cool. It genuinely is. Me Mega Pinsir is the... What was I say? It's... It's Mega Salabance's band, so I use this. Right? That's what Mega Pinsir is. Mega Pinsir is the Pokemon that you run because B Sa Mega Salabance is banned. Because you would use Mega Salabance otherwise. Because it's just Mega Pinsir, but better. Uh, but Mega Pinsir is a very good Pokemon. Uh, I actually have a soft spot for Pinsir. Um, I think I showed it off on like the bug, bug tier list last week. That I, I have a bit of a soft spot for Pinsir. Pinsir is a very cool Pokemon. Um, I've tried to make it work a lot. And they made a Mega Pinsir, which I think they just made it just rabid. Rabid Pinsir and it now flies. Like, it's someone's nightmares. So, I am going to give Pin Mega Pinsir a solid A tier. Like, I, th I say it's an A tier. I'd say it's behind these two. These two have something a little bit more, like, snappy for it. I also love Aerialate. Aerialate is a really cool ability. And I really want them to add Aerialate on a regular Pokemon, because I believe there's two Pokemon in existence that have Aerialate, and they're both Megas. Because it's Mega Pinsir and Mega Salamance, I believe, the two with Aerialate. I genuinely want them to put Aerialate on a... On just a more regular Pokemon, right? Because I know Pixelate is on more regular Pokemon, as is Refrigerate. Give us... Give us Aerialate on something regular, right? I think Aerialate is generally the strongest of those three. But, hey, it's cool, right? Yep. 
You know where he's going. You absolutely know where he's going. Everybody knows I love Gyarados. Gyarados, Gyarados, Gyarados. I adore Gyarados so much. It's an amazing Pokemon. One of my favorite water types. Definitely like top 10 water types. Maybe top 5, honestly. I love this thing. Um, it's one of the just classic, can't complain, 99% of the time will go on the team. Even if it's just on the team for a little bit in the game, like, Gyarados is so good. Um, it should be a dragon type, I'll say again. Um, the other reason it's not a dragon type is because uh, Game Freak originally wanted to, like, put away dragon, like, didn't have dragon type in the game originally. Uh, so flying was, like, the, the dragon type for the early on section of Gen 1 before they eventually programmed in dragon. Which is why I think it was going to be, like, flying and bird were going to be different types, I've got a suspicion. Because, um, obviously, bird type was a thing in the alpha stage, which is why missing no is a thing. But, but yeah, I absolutely love Gyarados. It's a great Pokemon. Um, it's an absolute classic. It's a powerhouse as well. Like, it's obliterated by electric, but it's just a very, very, very good Pokemon. It's a very, very cool design Pokemon. It's got one of the most hilarious movesets of ever. So, yeah. Gotta love Gyarados. It's great. Uh, you actually might notice a lot of uh, Kanto flying types are going to be um, S tier for me. Genuinely. Because uh, you'll notice, obviously, there's Charizard, there's Gyarados, there's Scyther. And there's my actual flying type of choice outside of Charizard. There's my fly Pokemon of choice, I should say. For Kanto and the original games. Aerodactyl. I love Aerodactyl a lot. Um, flying. Uh, rock flying is a really cool typing. It's a fossil. It's the closest thing to a dinosaur we had. In. Uh... Yeah I'll put it above Gyarados. I always really like. Actually do I want to put it above Gyarados? No I'll put, it... I'll put Gyarados ahead of it. But I love Aerodactyl. I love this thing. Uh, I haven't had a chance to use it as much as I would really like to. Uh, but it's super fast and it is really hard. Um, I'm always happy to use it if I get the option. It's just great. Like, I love it. I kind of want to try using Mega Aerodactyl as well because it actually gets one of my favorite abilities in Pokemon. It gets Tough Claws, which people know I love my Tough Claws. Uh, so I'm going to put Mega Aerodactyl. I think it's a worse design, though. So I'll put Mega Aerodactyl in A. I'll put it above. I'll put it above those two, but I don't think I don't like it quite as much as Mothra. But yeah, Me uh, Mega Aerodactyl is very very cool, and I love Aerodactyl a lot. So yeah, I'd say that's a solid spot. Now we get to some interesting ones. We get some interesting picks. So. The Legendary Birds. And this is all of them because they actually share the same Pokedex entries. Now, here's going to be the bit for me. People know I have mixed opinions on the Legendary Birds. Articuno. Very cool Pokemon. A very bad Pokemon. But I genuinely quite like its design. So Articuno is also a great color scheme. Articuno is going in A tier, but a low A tier. Galarian Articuno is going as a very, very high A tier. Galarian Articuno goes really hard and is very, very good. That's the thing. Normal Articuno is a very, very fun Pokemon to use, but it's really bad, right? You can definitely make it do work, but you have to really work in it. Articuno is bad. Ice Flying is not a good type combination at all. Um, so, it's not ideal for it, uh, and it's, de it's very defensive, it dies really hard to rock types. It's not unusably bad, uh, I have actually put Articuno to a good bit of work before, uh, but Galarian Articuno is significantly better, uh, the regular, the Articuno colour scheme is, goes so well. And then Galarian Articuno, I love its color scheme, but shiny Galarian Articuno, for reference, the shiny Galarian birds get the base color scheme, 
for their Kanto equivalent. And Galarian Articuno has one of the best shinies in the entirety of Pokemon, in my opinion. Uh, which isn't actually even very biased. It's a very, very nice. It goes a very good blue color, which is great beyond imagining. Apologies, I've got a pair of tweezers because I've just realized I've got a freaking splinter in my foot. But yeah. Uh, so yes, uh, but I love Galarian Articuno a lot. I have done some serious, serious work with it in uh, competitive Pokemon in like low tiers. It's nothing crazy. It's not crazy good Pokemon. Uh, there's a few ways to run it. Like there's a classic way to run it, which uh, a lot of people do, which I don't really like doing. A, a lot of people run it um, with something like a Calm Mind stored power set with like Roost and things, which I don't really like doing. I like using its uh, Freezing Glare, which is literally a Psychic boot. It's basically Psychic that can freeze, right? Which I really, really like as a move. I think that is very fun to use. And I've won games with it. Um, it's a very, very fun Pokemon to use. Uh, I still run Calm Mind on it, and I think I run Roost on it, but I like to switch up the other move. Uh, I often run Shadow Ball on it, and the Shadow Ball really takes people by surprise because they expect you to Psychic or something into it. And then you bust out the Shadow Ball, and they're like, I did not expect that at all. So yeah, you can do some work. Galarian Articuno is a very, very fun Pokemon, and I highly recommend people use it. Zapdos. Okay. People, people know I fucking hate Zapdos' design. It's a very strong Pokemon to use, but that isn't redeemable for me. It's got such a bad design. I don't like Zapdos. I actively hate it. It is probably the strongest of the Kanto birds. Uh, Moltres, arguably, could also be. Like, Moltres. Moltres, I think, is particularly good at the moment, strictly due to um, it being a really good against the current meta in Pokemon. Because there's lots of, like, physical ground types uh, and, and fighting types, which are very, very strong. And, it, and yeah, but there's a lot of good things. I don't like Zapdos. I think Zapdos has an awful design. I hate it. Regular Zapdos is a terrible, terrible design to Pokemon. I do not like it whatsoever. However, Galarian Zapdos redeems it entirely. Galarian Zapdos is one of the coolest ideas. They actually took the spiky dumb look that Zapdos has. Oh, also Zapdos, rain team Pokemon. Eh. <clears throat> A rain team Pokemon that's really, really solid and it's a very it should be a staple of any rain team that you've got it that you've got. Um, Zapdos is fantastic. I don't like Zapdos. But Gala Zapdos goes hard. The spiky look um actively works with Galarian Zapdos because it's a Roadrunner. Roadrunners actually look kind of spiky like that. And they're a grounded, it's a grounded bird. It's fighting flying, which is a really fun type. I love Galar Zapdos. Also, the actual color scheme, because obviously they gained this. I, I love the kind of like burnished orange kind of look of Galar Zapdos. I think that goes quite hard. And, um. Uh, if Zapdos looked more like Kilowattral, it would be a lot better. Yeah, it actually looks like a bird, right? It, it would be quite a good one. Uh, but Zapdos itself, look, it looks like a pigeon hit a windshield on a car going on the motorway. I've always said that about Zapdos. It just looks bad. It looks like a canary just went into the into front of a truck. It's not good. But Galar Zapdos goes so hard. Exactly. Gal Galar Zapdos goes so hard. Also, the yellow on the shiny looks very nice. It just works. It works so well. It's an easy S tier. A comfy S tier as well. Moltres. Now, I will fully say... I was never the biggest fan of Moltres' design. Moltres' design always struck me as kind of lazy. Uh, not in the same way of actively bad, like Zapdos, but always struck me as kind of lazy. But it has grown on me. I still do not like its head, but the rest of it is pretty good. I always kind of wish that Moltres looked more like Ho-Ho, though. Like, that's a better Phoenix Pokemon for me. It's it's just a fire bird. It look genuinely Moltres looks like a few fire a few of the early Kanto fire types like uh, Ponyta and things like that. It is just bird plus fire. That is it. Like Ponyta is horse is, is like pony plus fire and Rapidash horse plus fire. It was made by the same guy. I'm pretty sure. It's 
it's not that creative. They could have done a lot more work with a Phoenix concept, right? But I actually like using Moltres. Moltres is a lot of fun to use. Um, I actually have run... Before I was even in OU tier, um, I have actually run a very tanky um, flame body Moltres set, which is very enjoyable to use, right? It is a fun Pokemon, and I quite like it. It's not crazy good, but it's good, and you can have a lot of fun with it. I recommend trying it out, honestly. Uh, it got moved up to OU because it's a very, very good Pokemon at the moment. Uh, but it's mostly because it gets a good matchup at the moment, so... Don't really give it too much of a judgment of, oh, it's insanely powerful, just because it's in a really high tier at the moment. It's a good Pokemon, it just very, it's got a very good matchup currently, against all the really big scary things. So yeah, Moltres, fun Pokemon. But now, we get to the peak. We get to the peak legendary bird. Galarian Moltres easily and it's not close which is really telling considering how much i just screamed about galar zapdos those two there is one hell of a gap galarian moltres is a delight to use it's beautiful design the black and reddish pink works so well together every part of the design that's lazy on moltres they just tweak slightly and it goes so hard Dark Flying is an amazingly fun typing. It's one of my favorite type combos in the entire game. Berserk is a really fun ability to play around with as well. Agility. Uh, what was it? Uh, I had Agility. Citrus Berry. Uh, like Dark Flame. I can't remember that it's Gal uh, Moltres' special move. Hurricane. God, this thing is just a beast of a Pokemon. Nasty Plot, I think. I think I ran Nasty Plot, Agility. Did I run Nasty Plot? I don't remember. I definitely ran, agi ran Agility on my Galam Ultra set. In fact, you know what? I'll look it up because it was a smog on set that I tweaked. Oh, yeah, I know mine was. Mine was, um, I think I didn't have Nasty Plot, but I ran, I, I know actually I didn't run Agility, that was it. I didn't run Agility, I ran Nasty Plot, Fiery Wrath, Terra Blast, Hurricane, with a Citrus Berry. Um, and the fun part about Berserk, uh, if your Pokemon is dropped below half health, which immediately triggers Berserk, by the way, at the end of the turn, if you've got a Citrus Berry on, you'll heal above 50% health. Which means the next time you get hit, if you don't die, you get back down to below 50% health. Triggering Berserk 